All the action from the 2015 Paul Aquana Motor Rally is brought to you by the South African National Rally Commission and its partners Volkswagen, Ford, Toyota, Dunlop and Sassel. Life as we know it is full of choices, decisions to be made and plans to be laid. We plot, we scheme and we take aim and we do the best we can. But for the men and women who take part in the South African National Rally Championship, even the best laid plans are often swept aside on a whim by the gods of the sport who seem fickle at best and darn right cruel at worst. After seven rounds of the championship, the 2015 season finally reached its conclusion with the Polekwane Motor Rally, which took place on the 16th and 17th of October in the Limpopo city of the same name. For some of the crews in Class S 1600, this was the last roll of the dice, the last chance to improve on their championship positions, the last chance to make their mark on a year that saw defending champion Guy Bottrell bounce back after a rocky start to the point where he launched his little Yato Toyota Etios into the fray for the last time, all but certain that he'd be crowned champion at the end of the event. Short right three. But behind Bottrell, there was still much at stake, including the matter of the Polokwane rally itself. This year's rally was based around the Peter Mokaba Stadium on the southern edge of the city. Not only did the stadium serve as HQ for the event, but it also housed the service park and played host to the start and finish of the rally. Day one was scheduled to consist of four gravel stages, all to the south of Polikwane, while day two would offer five more gravel stages to the north of the city. Nine stages in all, all of them on gravel, with a total special stage distance of 175 kilometers. A tough test in other words, especially considering the notoriously rough stages on day one. As it turned out, stage one had to be cancelled after heavy rains prior to the event made the stage all but undrivable. So, the event was reduced to eight stages. Not that that made things any easier in Polikwane. With the crews lining up to tackle the event, fewer stages meant fewer obstacles and challenges to deal with, but also fewer chances to attack. This was especially poignant for Cape Tonians Paulus Franken and Henry Kern, who had second place in the championship firmly in their sights. They were only 7.5 points behind Matthew Vasilil and Skulk van Heerden in the Fregrim Toyota Etios, but Franken, who campaigns the Manitou Volkswagen Polo, was full of fire before the start of the event. We had a bit of ups and downs throughout the season, but we can still finish second in the championship, so we pushed for a win. Lacey Lyle was also acutely aware of the threat from Franken and, bearing in mind that Franken is based in Khanspai, the white shark capital of the world, it would have been easy for the young Durbanite to feel exposed. But Vasi Lyle has been in this position before and knew exactly what he had to do in order to hang on to second place. Very, very difficult for us to catch Guy. Uh, he's literally got to score no points, so we're not too worried about that. Um, we're just going to focus on keeping our second position and uh, getting to the end of the rally and making sure we match Franken all the time and stay close to him. So, yeah, that's our plan. The crew with the most points on the board going into the final round was defending champions Guy Bottrell and Simon Vasey Lyle. The pair started their season in uncharacteristically rocky fashion, but has since come back strong and didn't need to do much in Polokwane in order to make it two championships in a row. Quite a long season. Um, we just have to finish this event and score, um, I think it's three more points and uh, we won the championship. So we're most certainly not going to be out there trying to you know, set the pace, but uh, we're just going to get to the end and uh, hopefully with as little damage as possible. With just one round of the championship to come, Basie Lyle still had a mathematical chance of overtaking Bottrell for the title, but it would necessitate disaster for Bottrell and a win for Basie Lyle. Not impossible, but not likely either. 
In reality, Vasilar was more concerned about Franken behind him than he was about Bottrell in front of him. Chad from Bearden, who had missed the final rally of the season, and Richard Leake rounded out the top five as the 2015 Paul Aquino Motor Rally got underway. With Stage 1 cancelled, the crews made their way from the ceremonial start of the rally directly to Stage 2 known as Dupria. At only 10.4 kilometers in length, Stage 2 may have seemed benign at first, but a plethora of jumps and tricky corners made this a stern test, especially since it suddenly became the opening stage of the rally. After seven rallies, we'd become accustomed to seeing the name of Guy Bottrell at the top of the leaderboard, especially after the opening stage of an event. This time, however, it wasn't Bottrell's name who topped the standings after the opening stage, but rather that of young Richard Leake, who campaigns the ATS Ford Fiesta, together with navigator Rick Ferry. The pair set the benchmark time of 7 minutes 48.1 seconds, just 0.1 of a second quicker than Bottrell. Significantly, it immediately showed Leek's intent on the final event of the year, though Bottrell was hardly going to lie awake about the tenth of a second he lost on the opening stage. Ashley Haig-Smith with navigator Neil Burns beside him in the AHS Ford Fiesta was next fastest, losing 5.1 seconds to the crews ahead of him. And just three seconds behind him came Namibian Marco Himmel and navigator Gert Nienaber in that genuine parts Volkswagen Polo. The pair was clearly finding their stride in the Polo and managed to pip the Manitou Volkswagen Polo crew of Paul Franken and Henry Kern by 1.6 seconds. They in turn went seven seconds faster than AC Potgieter and Tommy Dutoy in their Ricky B Sectory auto body Polo who was five seconds quicker through the stage than championship runner-up Matthew Vasilal and navigator Skulk van Heerden in the Fragrum Toyota Etios. Early days, but stage two set the scene for the rest of the rally. It was on to stage three next, known as Sneeman. This 12.8 kilometer long stage was extremely rough, especially in the first section, but it also offered an opportunity for a brave crew to stamp its authority on the event. And that's exactly what Himmel did when he blasted through the rocky stage in a time of just 10 minutes 12 seconds point three, a full 7.4 seconds faster than the next quickest crew, fast enough at this early stage to push him all the way to the second place in the overall standings. Himmel was now just 0.7 seconds behind the early leader Leap. But Leek managed the second fastest time on stage three, ensuring that he maintained his fast shrinking lead. Defending champions came through third fastest in a time 10 seconds slower than that posted by Himmel. Even so, Bottrell was doing exactly what he needed to do in order to ensure victory in the championship. The first two stages are done. Uh, we've taken no risks. Uh, yeah, we're just keeping it nice and straight on the road. Ashley Haig Smith was up next though he lost 1.3 seconds on the stage. Still, the youngster was as upbeat as always. It was alright. Uh, I see we lost about a good 20 seconds, I think, there, so... AC Potgieter and Paul Franken posted almost identical stage time, but were losing the best part of 15 seconds to Himmel on the stage. But Vasey Lyle lost even more when he posted a time 23 seconds down on the leader. Not quite the start he needed. With two of the day's three stages done, it was time for a quick visit to the Dunlop Service Park, back at the Peter Macabre Stadium. A dash of fuel, some repairs were needed, and off they went again to face the final stage of the day. Though we also found a moment to catch up with early leader Richard Lee. Yeah, I know the first two stages went well. I'm happy with the car. The car feels great. Uh, Rick is doing a great job, and yeah, there's still quite a bit to go, so we'll see. Back to the stage called Dupria then. This time a stage four of the rally and the last one of the day. Remember the fight for second in the championship between Paul Franken and Matthew Vasey Lyle? Well, Franken clearly decided to grab that battle by the scruff of its neck and shake it all over the place. He went five seconds quicker than his rival on the stage, though it wasn't the fastest time by far. No, the fastest time was posted by Bottle, who pulled out all the stops to Pip Himmel by 1.2 seconds. Clearly another good dice was on, as is so often the case in the hotly contested Class S1600. 
Ashley Haig Smith in the meantime went third fastest on the stage, though he lost the best part of seven seconds to Bottrell in the process. Most importantly, all eight Class S1600 crews that started the 2015 Motor Rally finished the day largely unscathed. And by the time the sun set over the dusty stages south of Polikwane, this is what the leaderboard looked like. Namibian Marco Himmel was in the lead, but only by the skin of his teeth. Bottrell was breathing down his neck, just 0.6 of a second behind. Leek was in third, having lost time in the final stage of the day, with Haig Smith and Franken completing the top five. For Himmel, however, the day had gone pretty much to plan and he had every reason to be happy. It was quite unexpected. I didn't think we will be leading. Uh, it's good to be back on form again. I think it's been a long time coming and unfortunately at the end of the season. But we had a pretty good large stage now and um, we did two small mistakes which probably cost it like a second and a half. But yeah, happy for the day. In a way, Paul Franken and Matthew Basilau have a lot in common. They are both young, talented and quiet, well brought up lads who walk the walk and don't mess around with too much talking. But on Saturday 17 October 2015, it was Franken who stepped forward to stake his claim on second place in the championship. The scene of his big push was stage 5 of the Polokwana Motor Rally on a stage known as Kruger. Nearly 39 kilometers in length, Kruger was by far the longest stage of the rally and the perfect place to make a stand. Franken went six seconds faster than anyone else and put 50 more seconds between himself and Basie Lyle. No, I didn't feel too bad. I uh, struggled to keep momentum in some of the tight corners, so I think we lost a bit of time there. But Vasey Lyle knew that this was not a fight to win in outright pace. He's been around for long enough to keep plugging away and waiting for the rally to come to him. As a matter of fact, Franken's time of 26 minutes 31.1 seconds was the fastest of all and he was nearly 12 seconds up on Marco Himmel who posted the second fastest time in his genuine parts Volkswagen Polo. Richard Leek and Rick Ferry in the ATS Fiesta, Stage 5 was full of overshoots and rear brake troubles, and they lost 20 seconds to Franken as a result. <laughs> Ashley Haig Smith and navigator Neil Burns were next fastest, and they were followed by AC Potgieter in the Ricky B Polo, and Andrew Hine in the Hein Sport version of the same car. But hang on, we're missing one of the top names here. Guy Bottrell and navigator Simon Basilisle had suffered a damper failure mid-stage and tumbled down the order as a result. They lost nearly a minute to Franken on the stage and slipped to fifth overall in the process. Well, I think we've got a broken shock, um, so we nursed it. We nursed it in for the last 10 k's. Next up was the traditional blast around the farm of Richard Schulenberg on the stage of the same name. This time it was employed as stage 6 of the event and featured 18 frantic kilometers of special stage rallying. 18 kilometers that took the stage winner just 11 minutes 36.6 seconds to complete at an average speed of 92 kilometers an hour. The man who set the benchmark time was none other than rally leader Marco Himmel and navigator Gert Nienaber in their genuine parts Volkswagen Polo. The pair went just a single tenth of a second faster than Leek and Ferry in the ATS Ford Fiesta. But then Ferry had left his stage notes for stage 6 in the service park and they had to navigate the treacherous stage from memory, daunting to say the least. Third fastest was Ashley Haig Smith and navigator Neil Burns in the AHS Fiesta. The pair lost four seconds to the leaders on the stage but managed to stay in touch with the action ahead of them. Young AC Potgieter was next fastest, just a single second behind Haig Smith. While Andrew Hine posted an almost identical time. Further back, Matthew Vasilar was still going, though he wasn't in the running for a podium at this point. Bottrell was still nursing his damaged Yato Toyota Etios, and with another stage between him and service, things were looking somewhat bleak. But the biggest upset of stage 6 came when Paul Franken and Henry Kern emerged from the stage. The pair had lost 10 seconds to the leader and things weren't well in the Manito supported polo. Even so, the Cape Tonian was still in third place. But how long would it last? 
For Franklin, the writing was on the wall, and even before the very next stage known as Berlamunds for Kale, the youngster parked the Manitou Polo on the side of the road, watching helplessly as second place in the championship slipped out of his grasp. The scene of Franken's retirement was just before the start of the 17.4 km long stage 7, which was, however, also the scene of an emphatic stage win for Marco Himmel and Gert Ninova, who took 10 seconds out of the second fastest crew on the stage. The second fastest crew was none other than would-be champions Guy Bottrell and Simon Basie Lyle in the Yato Toyota Etios. Still nursing a damaged shock absorber, the pair posted a time 11 seconds down on that of Himmel. Not fast enough to win the rally, but certainly fast enough to keep them right in the mix. AC Potgieter clearly hit his stride on stage 7, going just half a second slower than Bottrell, with Ashley Haig Smith coming through another half a second behind him. For Richard Leake and Rick Ferry in the ATS Fiesta, however, stage 7 proved pretty tough. Remember the puncher they suffered earlier? Turns out the rear caliper was damaged in the process, and on stage 7 it caused another puncher. This time it cost the crew 50 seconds, and they had to watch second place slip away as a result. Matthew Vasey Lyle in the Fragrum Toyota Etios made it through stage 7 without incident, sure in the knowledge that Franken was out of the picture, and that second in the championship was safe. All he had to do now was get to the end of the rally. With the morning stages behind them, the crews were finally offered some respite in the form of a visit to the Dunlop Service Park back in Polokwane. This gave us a moment to catch up with the hapless Franken. Uh, unfortunately, we had to retire with a fan belt coming off, so we made a call to rather well, stop. Um, we're happy with our, with our pace and uh, we'll be back next year. It also gave us a chance to chat with the rally leader, who now had a comfortable gap between himself and the crew in second place. We had a good morning's loop. Um, we had a bit of gearbox problems uh, with oil spilling out, but nothing too serious, and we managed it. Uh, luckily, Guy and them had some prob uh, problems, and yeah, we're now leading by a margin of 50 seconds, and we'll just keep it there. So, after stage 7 of the Paula Juana Motor Rally, it was Himmel who led by 50 from Haig Smith. Leek was the big loser after his puncher problems, tumbling to third, now more than a minute behind the lead. Potrida was up into fourth, while Bottrell was hanging on despite his damper problems in fifth. Only two stages remained in the 2015 South African National Rally Championship, and both were repeats from earlier in the day. First up was stage eight, featuring a second run through Kruger, the longest and hairiest stage of the rally. and Ferri, the morning session was frustrating and they lost a chunk of time due to caliper problems on their ATS Fiesta. But after a visit to the service park, they came out swinging and posted a time of 26 minutes 25.6 seconds over 38.7 kilometers. That's an average speed of 87 kilometers an hour, despite the massive pivot points and tight turns that they had to negotiate. An emphatic stage win for Leek and Ferri. Yeah, no, it felt good. It's a lot better than the first run this morning, so we're hoping it's a good time. Just waiting for Ashley's time to see. The next fastest crew was that of Haig Smith and Burns in the AHS Fiesta, who were nine seconds slower than Leek. The result was that Leek closed the gap to Haig Smith, who was in second place at the time, to just 4.6 seconds. That was a much better stage. We should have been driving like that in the beginning. AC Potrida and Tommy Detoy posted the third fastest time, making the most of their Ricky B and Sectory Auto Body Polo. They very nearly matched Haig Smith's time and were hovering just outside the top three. Guy Bottrell came through next fastest and he was followed by rally leader Marco Himmel, who still maintained a reasonably comfortable lead despite struggling with gearbox problems. Sadly, stage 8 also spelt the end for Andrew Hein in the Heinsport Volkswagen Polo, who joined Franken on the retirement list after the engine in his car gave up the ghost. So to the final stage of the 2015 Paula Quane Motor Rally, a repeat of stage 6, this time employed as stage 9. Schulenberg was to be the scene of the final battle of the year, and with the crews in class S1600 bunched up behind the leader, anything could happen. With the heat suddenly on, rally leader Himmel decided to push as hard as possible, despite the dodgy gear shift that had developed in his genuine parts polo. 
the Namibian went all in on the final stage and posted a time of 11 minutes 26.9 seconds. Not the fastest of the day, but certainly fast enough to ensure victory. The fastest crew on the final stage was the resurgent Lee Kinferi, who had clearly decided to wrest second place from Ashley Hagsmith no matter what. The pair went 2.8 seconds quicker than even Himmel, but the expected fight back from Haig Smith was a non-event. The luckless Fiesta crew suffered recurring drive shaft issues and lost more than five minutes on the stage, dropping them well down the order and handing second place to Leek. Guy Bottrell in the meantime went four seconds slower than Himmel, but still posted the third fastest time on the stage. Remember, all Bottrell had to do was finish the event, or even less, taking Super Rally regulations into account, and that he did in fine style too. AC Potrida was next fastest through the stage, and as a result he recorded his first podium finish. A great day of racing for the youngster who has shown exciting pace at times. Matthew Basie Lyle completed the stage some 14 seconds slower down on the leaders, but it hardly mattered. By completing the final stage, he sealed his second position in the championship and moved up into fifth in the overall standings. And then suddenly it was all over. Not only had the 2015 Polokwane Motor Rally come to an end, but so had the 2015 South African National Rally Championship. In the end, it was Marco Himmel who claimed his first victory of the season behind the wheel of his genuine parts Volkswagen Polo. He had Leek and Ferri nearly half a minute behind him, with Potrida stepping onto the podium for the first time in his rally career. Bottrell finished fourth with teammate Vasey Lyle completing the top five. So it was two Volkswagens, two Toyotas and a Ford in the top five. Testament to the great diversity of the crews in Class S 1600. The Polokwane Motor Rally was a show of force for Namibia's Marco Himmel and navigator Gert Nienabe. The pair piloted their Volkswagen Genuine Parts Polo with aplomb, proving that the right tool in the right hands can be lethal. On the one hand, one might argue that Himmel's performance in the Polokwane was nothing more than a one-hit wonder, a flash in the pan. But on the other hand, it could also be the awakening of a future giant in the sport. And that's probably where the smart money is. In the end, the young Namibian attained the highest step of the podium in Polokwane and had every reason to be upbeat about his future in the sport. It was quite unexpected, like I said in the first day, um, but we're very happy with it uh, to end the season in a high. I think it's very good for Volkswagen to have two cars in both classes on a podium, with them ending their rally career. So yeah, I can't be more stoked than I am. He was flanked by Lee Kinferi, who did well to take second overall in their ATS North City Ford Fiesta. And AC Potrida and Tommy Dutoy in the Ricky B Sectory Autobody Volkswagen Polo, who posted their best result yet by finishing third in Polokwane. But there was disappointment for Franken and Kern, who had pushed hard in order to take second place in the championship from Matthew Vasey Lyle and Navigator Skulk van Heerden. But in the end, they may have pushed just a little too hard and was forced to watch from the sidelines as Vasey Lyle and Van Heerden capped off a great season in the Fragrum Toyota Etios by sealing second place for the year. But in the end, it was Guy Bottrell and Simon Vasey Lyle who made it two championships in a row. Granted, their Polokwane Motor Rally lacked the fireworks that fans have come to expect from the pair, but then again, they only really needed to finish anywhere in the order to clinch the title. After a surprisingly tough year, Bottrell was characteristically demure despite winning his second championship. But then again, the entire rally was somewhat dampened by the announcement that Volkswagen SA Motorsport would end its factory rally involvement at the end of this season after 33 years in the sport. The future of the sport is being mapped out even as this TV broadcast goes out. But for now, we leave you with the words of that 2015 Class S1600 champion, Guy Bottrell. Yes, that's uh, what we set up at the beginning of the year is to win the championship and uh, we've had a phenomenal year, had some ups and downs but uh, we're really happy to get to the end of the year and uh, achieve our goals and uh, you know, certainly down to our sponsors, 
uh, Yato Tools, Toyota and Liquimoli have really uh, been out there and helped us a lot. And uh, you know the personal achievements that we've all achieved, uh, my mom, my dad, Grant and Sue, Simon, my navigator, everyone's put in a hell of a lot of work and it's uh, all down to them and I can only thank them very much for a phenomenal two years of rallying with them. from the 2015 National Rally Championship was brought to you by the South African National Rally Commission and its partners Volkswagen, Ford, Toyota, Dunlop and Sassel.